Hello, and welcome to another episode of Worst Collection Ever. This is the show where we tell you about the worst comic book collection in existence. And it just happens to belong to us. I'm Jen. I'm Sean. I don't have a bit. No bits? Bitless. No bits? What the hell, man? You're always doing bits. I am always doing bits. My life is a whole bit. It... My life is a bit. The Sean Merrick story. <laughs> it's, um, so, mm. hello. Hi. Uh, welcome to the show. Let's talk, let's just get right into it. Let's just talk about movie films. Yeah, should we do a spoiler notice here? Yeah, I don't think there's a ton of spoilers. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't, there's I don't think there's need to do a ton of spoilers, though. But just as an FYI, there may be spoilers here. So if you don't want to hear anything about Deadpool, Wolverine, maybe... Fast forward. Yeah. I mean, hopefully by the time this comes out, you maybe have seen it. I feel like most of the people that listen to this show probably would have. Sure. But uh, yeah, spoilers. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, Deadpool Wolverine came out and it's probably the first big comic book movie it's, we've had in, a, I feel like in the, a good year. I was going to say, I don't remember the last one we saw in theaters. I was trying to remember what the it last, probably, mm, was it? I mean, the, it could have been. Because basically, I'm trying to remember how it went for us. Like, we went to go see, we saw Love and Thunder. Yes, that and you killed, got really upset about it. It just, just really killed the vibe, you know? Yeah, and I'm like, have sucked. we seen anything since then? Comic book related. Comic book related, I, something like, like That's what? not like The Crow, obviously, which we went to go see, but that's yeah. not the same thing. Well, like, I mean, because like DC-wise, like Aquaman 2 came out. Which I don't think we've even seen. I've never seen that. Uh, Black Adam came out. Which we did not see that in the theater. Did not see that in the theater. Uh, Quantumania. Didn't see that in the theater. Didn't see that in the theater. And then there's also, uh, there's also, no, was it Doctor Strange? Multitude of Madness. I think it might have been. Oh, maybe because we did see that in the that theater. That was, that, that might have been it. Yes. I think that might have been it because I know, that, I feel like, I want to say that was after blood and thunder but i think it was too so that might have been the last one that one we definitely saw in the theater and i don't think we talked about it on this show because i don't think we were active but there was also uh wakanda forever which i have yet to see yeah we still haven't seen that and guardians of the galaxy which uh three which i have yet to see right. which i continue to f astound myself with because that we haven't bothered <laughs> It had never bothered. The thing is, though, it's like Adam Warlock's in that movie. I know, and you love him. I love Adam Warlock. He's but, your boy. But I have yet to make an effort to see it. And, and you know, part of it has to do with the whole rocket raccoon, uh, like yeah, animals, that, use thing. That's gonna. And I how, realize he's not like a real animal, but I still don't want to see that. Well, the way that they that upsets people me. talk about it is like it's so affecting. That yeah. I'm like, I just, I don't know if I want to go into that. That, that. I'm not in the mindset to do that. No. And that that's kind of my, that's really one of the reasons I haven't watched is because you know how I am. Like I can, as evidenced by yesterday, I can watch Deadpool and Wolverine, watch everybody be slaughtered yeah, and watch all the blood and be fine. But you hurt an animal and I'm like in tears. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Don't, don't, don't be hurt. No animals. Yeah. You can kill everything else. You can hit a guy in the face with an adamantium foot and I'm fine with it. But if you hurt an animal, I'm going to be very upset. Well, it's kind of like we were watching Arachnophobia the yes. other day. And, you know, obviously spiders everywhere. I know you're not a spider fan. I'm not a spider fan. Um, but some of those some of those were real spiders. And I felt bad because I think they killed them. They may have. Some there of those spiders died. That and that actually made me feel bad. <laughs> I feel like I, I think from what I know of that movie. Because like I know those production. spiders, the ones that they use in there, they aren't they aren't mean. Yeah. Poor things. I got the impression they tried not to kill a lot of spiders. I'm sure they did, but I. But anyways, I'm sure accidentally. <laughs> I don't know. One of these days, I'll, I'll get. I'll get to it. We'll I'll get, get to. I'll get to Guardians of the Galaxy. I'll get to all these other Marvel ones I haven't seen yet. Maybe the DC ones. You know, I don't know. But there's. But obviously, yeah. So let's talk about this movie, and then we have sure. uh, Comic Con stuff to talk about too. Sure. So, but I'll try to keep this as brief as possible because we want to keep it spoiler free. But basically, the premise of this movie is Deadpool exists in his neck of the woods in his universe which i think is what was one zero zero three eight maybe it's maybe whatever one obviously it's not in the 616 the deadpool we know from the movies does not exist in 616 right uh but but the thing is is i feel like i missed something and maybe i haven't seen i haven't seen the second movie in a while uh-huh i don't know if that was ever brought up what deadpool being in a totally separate universe when until this movie yes no, no, I'm saying, but for the, I'm saying in general, oh. like with the second movie, I 
recall there being at the end of that movie, he had access to that cable's know, this, watch, cable's watch, like this time machine thing mm-hmm. or whatever. And I don't remember how that ends. I just know there's things where he's going back in time to keep make sure that you know his girlfriend lives or whatever. Yeah, I think they just kind of mentioned that he destroyed it. He destroyed it, but he also it also comes up where he's just he's not Deadpool anymore. He's just existing as Wade Wilson and he's because working. he couldn't he couldn't get to be an Avenger. I guess that was the whole thing. But right? was that but that was like the only thing that was like he, he he was like went around, he did a bunch of stuff, couldn't be an Avenger and just gave up. Like apparently that's the like just, idea. Like yes. we just I mean, I know we just gloss over that, but it felt like there was something I, I, I was like, did I miss that in the other movie? That confused me. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, but I thought that was kind of just like we ended with him being Deadpool. And I guess his girlfriend's like, you need to do something worthwhile. And he was like, no, I will. I will sell Kias with Rob. Uh, Rob, Rob Delaney. Rob Delaney. And then that's it. Apparently, Logan from the movie Logan, right? It, that version of wolverine exists in deadpool's universe Mm. and when he died he is what they call an anchor being and now that he is dead which means the entire universe will unravel apparently very very slowly would take like thousands of years but then there's this guy this villain this what's what's his name uh paradox yeah who like live there's like a weird it's kind of like a loki thing where he like lives it's it's the loki it's it's the low it's the the Loki organization. Yeah. And he, a time play yeah. Thi- time to TVA or whatever. Yeah. And I he's did not like, watch Loki season one or season I two. I didn't whatever. watch any of it. So they were just like, yeah. hey, uh, Wade Wilson, we're going to take you over here. You're going to go to B616. You can be an Avenger. Uh, we're just going to completely annihilate your universe because yeah. Logan's dead. Uh, fuck all your friends. I'm, I don't want to wait thousands of years. And so Deadpool's like, well, I know. I'm going to go get you another anchor being yeah i'm gonna go find me another wolverine so that's basically where this comes from so there's these are different this is not logan obviously from the ones we know this is a different version of wolverine that comes from a different universe yeah. so you know we go through and find different wolverines yeah. which actually is kind of fun well I, li- I like a good wacky montage in that regard because obviously it's a wacky movie because there's deadpool it's funny but it's bloody there's a few there's a few deep not deep cuts but just uh, versions of Wolverine <laughs> that are the little short Wolverine. Yeah, the that little, was fun. There's a little short Wolverine. There's a few of them from like icon, like not iconic, but just things from like comic books, comic books, or like the '90s. You know, shit that like kids like you know people that grew up with it would be like, oh, oh man, I remember that. But then there's yeah. other people that are just watching, you know, like younger people that are watching and are just like, I don't fucking know what the, look at that, you know. Right. But for me, I was like, ah. Nyeh. I was, you know, I was the elbow guy, you know, you, yep. I was the nudge. He was like, hey, 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 mm-hmm. hey, look at that. Hey, hey, look at that. Uh, But eventually what happens is, you know, he finds a Wolverine uh, and then we just get a we get we get some uh, fun cameos, well, fun cameos in terms of, like he has to like he wants to get save his universe. Wolverine wants to like make this and from his that universe wants to make his universe right, you know, because there's a big tragedy that happened in that universe. And he also want, you know, and eventually there's these other characters that he runs into. Obviously, we get some some cameos. You get Chris Evans comes and the assumption is he's going to be Captain America and he's Johnny Storm, Johnny Storm, which actually I did not even think of when he showed up. And when he turned into Johnny Storm, I was like, oh, that's fucking funny. I enjoyed that. Um, because I people forget that. Let me forget I that did. Johnny Storm. W- that, that, Chris that Evans was, was in that movie. Yeah, he was. That was him. I um, because I went in completely cold. I have not looked at anything about this movie. No, the I missed only a lot of the thing for it. I knew that I had heard was X twenty three. That's the only thing I had heard that she was somehow in this movie, and I was like, okay, fine, whatever. So I went in totally cold. I went in with no expectations, which actually was probably one of the reasons I thought it was fun. I mean, it wasn't the best movie I've ever seen, but it was fun. I had a good time. I had fun at the movies, right? So we saw Chris Evans. And then, of course, we get um, Jennifer Garner shows up as Electra, <laughs> Which is another, that's another one. that Which I was like, oh, hey, look at that. There's we left. We lest we forget. There's an Electra movie that was made. There sure is. And I've never seen it. I've never seen it. <laughs> I did. I, like, why? Why? Why did they make that movie? Like Daredevil didn't did light the word on fire for that movie, know. and 
they insisted on doing this one. I mean, not that, I mean, it, it, I just, it just, it's just crazy that there's some movies that were just made, like they just keep, they made them and you forget yeah. that they existed. Yeah. So, but then also uh, Blade shows up. Now that one, I was really excited. I, Cause I, again, had no idea. I was like, oh, yeah, wow, Jennifer. spoiled me earlier in the day. Thanks, yeah. Instagram. See, I, I knew nothing about it. And then I was like, oh, look, Jennifer Garner. And then fucking Blade shows up and I was like, holy shit. That's fucking awesome. I was really excited about that. Well, fucking Blade. I mean, fucking even, Wesley Snipes, even, man. Even though Wesley, he didn't really have a lot of lines or whatever, but he was still there. And that's all I cared about. <laughs> he had some good stuff. There was some stuff. There was some good stuff. But I was just like, holy shit, it's Blade. How yeah, there, there was some good stuff. And then there was uh, Channing Tatum as Gambit. Gambit. But it's based on the idea that Channing Tatum was supposed to be Gambit. Yes. It wasn't Taylor Kish as Gambit, who was actually a, phys- a physical representation no. of Gambit. Screen. It was the idea that Channing Tatum at one point had some was was it was close to happening and whatever was he was going to be Gambit. Yep. And obviously it never came to fruition. No. Which whatever. But he's showing up and I just have to say he looks so uncomfortable in that costume. Well, you know, here's the thing. And, and, and not, I, he's, he's a beautiful man. And yes, but it it does not it, it feel like Gambit to me. Also, he I think his face is too big for that cowl because it literally looks like it was like yes. Just going to fall out. He's but like, he's like, like, like job of the hut. I think what we did, <laughs> what we saw in this movie was two things, because I do have to say, I think the yellow suit on Hugh Jackman looks great. I thought that was great. I'm really glad we got to see the yellow suit. I did not like the Wolverine cowl because in live action, it doesn't look it doesn't, right. It doesn't sit as good. No, it doesn't look right. The yellow suit head to toe looked great. And then he pulled on the cowl at that part at the end. And I was like, oh. Yeah. I don't know if I like this. A reason, and I don't know if it was just the way it was made or whatever, but I was like, oh, there's a reason we haven't seen this before. There's a reason why Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in X-Men 2000 was so over is because he did. I, I think that's a, it, it, the, him not having a mask was a big part of it. Well, he's very pretty. That's the well, other he's, thing. He's a, be- he's, a, he's a gorgeous man. Yeah. But it just made sense in that situation where he's not walking around with a thing that's going over his hair and his ears or you know whatever it's- yeah and i mean like again i'm glad we got to see it and but it just in live action it doesn't work the way it does in like animation or comics and i think we saw that too with the gambit costume where it was like a lot of it looked good and then some of it was like mm, mm. <laughs> i don't know i don't think any of it looked good to be really honest. didn't think like the trench coat and like the, the trench coat's the, nice but to be like but- the, the top part where he had like almost like the purpley shirt thing i don't know he just it just looked so. He looked so like the headpiece looked bad. It, it looked like a it looked like a, a, a Halloween, Halloween costume. costume. It did. It looked like it was like you know, it was like want to be again for Halloween. Hey, all right, put this over your fucking jowls. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, Taylor or uh, Channing Tatum is not fat. Oh no, it, it's but, just it, I think it he's... made him look really to me. He looked like really bloated. I think it was because of the way that face thing was cut because I, he was... might just have a lot of face. Maybe, yeah, maybe so, he's a big cu- face guy. Yeah, yeah. It really maybe he's did. Like, he's got Ron Perlman disease, you know? Well, hey, a lot of those uh, Hollywood actors have humongous heads. It's true. And and because it's, it's on small bodies, and honestly, it's because it, it works on like on screen. Yeah. So I think <laughs> I it, like that's a secret to movies. No, big honest, heads, small bodies. honest to God, that's what Conan O'Brien always said. He's like, they're shorter than you realize they and are. their heads are much bigger. Oh, yeah. But it just for some reason, it just made him his face look weird. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't know if this would work. Maybe. I didn't know if it would work on a, a, a very slight man because Channing Tatum obviously works out. But anyways, for the, as far as the movie goes, I, I, I will just say that I'll just say this. Like, there's a lot of fun things in it. Oh, I had fun. Yeah, there's a lot of jo- obviously a lot of jokes, a lot of crazy violence, a lot of innovative. I love some violence, violence and kills and yeah. surprises and stuff. There was a point, I think, towards the end where there was a big Deadpool fight. Oh, with say, all the Deadpools, we'll that's right. That. I'll just put it that way. There's a big Deadpool fight. I got kind of burned out by then. Uh, yeah. Because I was like, okay, so we know what needs to happen here. Yeah. Why not just go do that? But now we're having like this big fight, you know, and it's this big set piece and it felt superfluous. And there's also, in terms of like character developments and stuff like that, like... <sighs> I I love I love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Mm-hmm. He's great. I feel like there wasn't a lot here for him to do. I think that's why we got that huge like backstory stuff so he could like 
have that moment where he's like wearing the sweater and crying and whatever when she's like in his head when he's talking about what happened okay that's probably i feel like that was okay you're right i feel like that was the emotional core that we're gonna get here because he you're right hugh jackman didn't have a lot to do except stand in the background and get drunk stand in the background get drunk and and swear at deadpool which i mean which fair is enough. fine i'm okay with that but i i also and again i don't know what i'm thinking about coming into my deadpool movie and things like i need some emotional gravitas or no, something no but that that's where you and, and i think you also got the you know he's he wants to make things right by at the end and da 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 so you get his whole like you know you've got something to live for let me do it type of i'm going to be a hero type thing I, I mean it was a good it was a good feel good feeling good mix I, i'm glad to see those the, the the Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman together is a lot of fun. Sure. And just, I think a lot of the other people popping in here and there, it's kind of like when you think about how the Avengers movies were, this was this big deal because you had all these big hitters. Yeah. But this was kind of it for me in a way, because I'm like, okay, well, well there's blade. Mm-hmm. And then you got, you know, X 23 and you got Electra and you, you got, got, you you got, got some weird gambit. Ass, you got some gambit. You got that. It's like, it's like, this is kind of fun. Like, I kind of like this. I kind of actually, it kind of reminds me more of the book we're reading. Fair enough. It's almost like yeah. a secret defenders kind of thing where it's just like, Hey, here's a bunch of random, random motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. And we're just gonna, we're gonna roll with it. I mean, I did enjoy it again. I had fun with it. I laughed. There were some really good jokes in there. There was some stupid shit in there too. I'm not going to lie. Um, but as far as going in, not having any expectations, except to see Wolverine and Deadpool together, I got what I came for. Yeah. So it was fun. It was, I enjoyed it. I think there were way too many music drops, music yeah, yeah, uh, needle get drops. Of that. I was like, enough. It's like literally anytime they walk out, I was like, hey, let's go do this. And it's like, you know, Fucking Madonna. Yeah. 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 We even got some fucking grease in there. Grease I was like, what are we doing? So that it, there was a little bit too much of that. I'm surprised that, you know, if we're going into the other timelines. Yes. That we didn't go any deeper because there are other Marvel movies like the Captain America from the night 1990 movie. Where oh, God. It's, uh, and and P- Dolph Lundgren Punisher. Could you imagine if Dolph Lundgren Punisher? They do oh mention Punisher gosh. a bunch. So they did. And, there, and there's like four different but he's right there's like four different punishers i would have appreciated dolph longer punisher i have yet to see that movie but that needs to but that, that would have been fucking crazy you get that i was also thinking about uh the roger corman fantastic four. Oh yeah like, you can imagine like if because you've seen if you go online you can see clips like it's i don't think it was ever actually released released but it's out there and so if you go and you can see a clips of like the thing you just see like that guy show up and, and just like everybody's like bleh, 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 and just throw it up or something i don't know i just like i need i kind of needed a bit more or lou ferrigno is the hulk <laughs> just show me <laughs> i don't know man you know we got to or I, hell you want to get even <laughs> you want to get the, the the furthest down you could possibly go here's what you do you get vincent d'onofrio to reprise oh, his role as quote unquote thor from adventures of babysitting <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I, you know, because we, I'm actually surprised we did not get like Liev Schreiber to come in as Sabretooth because we got the other guy as Sabretooth. Oh, hey, Taylor Maine. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 we need Taylor Maine. We need, that's what, that's what we needed. I would have preferred. I, oh, no, I, I, I would have too. If, if I was need, just, we should, maybe we should have had both. I think that would have been fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. He could be like, hey, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lee Schreiber. <laughs> so, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's go see it. It's a lot of fun. It's fun. It's, you know, it's a. Yeah, there's a lot of goofiness to it. Yeah. Real quick, too. Uh, trailers that came out. Oh, uh, God. Fucking the, that. The, apparently, this Santa Claus movie that has probably been on the shelf for five years. It has to have been. Because this uh, Red One, which is basically Dwayne Johnson as like Santa's Secret Service. But also J.K. Simmons is Santa, but J.K. Simmons is also fucking this is this is when he's Jack. Is this what he got Jack? I think this is what he had to get Jack for. Because But don't you see this is arms? I, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, this is him. And then is it Chris Evans in this too? Who's who's is it him? Pine yes, or Evans? yes, it's Chris Evans. I always, yeah, I, I always get confused sometimes with the Pine and Evans. Pine v. Evans. Um, That would be my that would be my pitch. To a uh, celebrity death match. Nice. <laughs> Find V. Evans. So I could we could finally have one just so we're all clear on which one it is. No, no, it is. It is Pine. 
Are you sure? Because he goes into that part where he go. They uh, Dwayne Johnson like makes that car big, and he goes into the stories like, "Hey, you got a Wonder Woman action figure?" Are you sure? And maybe oh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm Hold wrong. On, I'm gonna look it up. Do okay. you tell tell them all about it? So, but basically, it's something where Santa Claus Santa Claus gets kidnapped, even though he's a fucking monstrous J.K. Simmons <laughs> and the Dwight and the Rock and Evans and Slash Pine have to save him. And there's it is Chris Evans. Oh, okay. I, yeah, that, that, he that, just that, has dark hair. He always has dark hair. He didn't in uh, Avengers. He had blonde hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, they have to get the thing, and there's CGI fucking snowmen that are like I, frost giants. They look. Can we just say that that CGI looked fucking shit? Oh, it looks garbage. That pol- so there's a polar bear in that trailer. Oh, that's that right. a polar like, bear kind of. Got, yeah. It's so bad. I was like, what the. F- it, it, I thought that was the cold cola bear. That's what it looked like. I think, that's, I think it's him. But that's how bad it looks. Because I'm like, yeah, you can do that on a commercial because nobody gives a fuck. But this is a billion dollar movie or what, however much. Which somehow is not a Netflix movie. It should have been. That should it have gone should, straight to streaming. This is a straight to streaming movie. But honestly, I think they're like, well, it's Christmas. We got to put something. So, <laughs> Christmas? Oh God, no! <laughs> it's just bad. It. Yeah. I. Uh, I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's also uh, real quick. So we'll say what else there was. Uh, Smile two. It should have been smiles. So should have been smiles. Should have been smiles. How you botched that? I had seen that trailer before. I think I saw it on YouTube. Well, I got confused because I thought it was Trap, the H M, M- Night Shyamalan movie. Oh, I don't know if I know that one. Well, didn't you see that's the one because that takes place at a concert and like Josh Hartnett's with his daughter there? Oh, yes. Vaguely. OK, yes, 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 yes. Right. But I thought that was that. But it was a different trailer. And I also thought this girl in there was Lady Gaga. No, nope. but it's not. It's not. I don't know. That's whatever. I, we'll, 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 that's it, it's horror movies. I'm down with that. I'm always here for that. Well, speaking of trailers, we'll just say this, but I finally got around. You saw it a few times, but I finally got around last night to seeing the Joker I'm just call it Joker Two, mm-hmm. uh, Joker Two trailer, and why do we fucking need this? Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. Because speaking of Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga is in it. Fine, whatever. I did not want to see a second Joker movie after the first one, and I certainly do not want to see a musical one. And I was like, why? Who? Who is this for? Because I think like the 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 bunch of people who were like Joker, we love this movie, are not going to want to see a fucking no. musical Joker. They're going to be like singing <laughs> with Lady Gaga. That, that's I'm like, so who is watching this movie? Because it's I have no interest in it. I have even less interest than I had before after I saw the trailer. Yeah, I just no desire whatsoever. I'll wait to see that one. If I was by well, ESA, I it, since it's not my job to see the movies, hopefully I don't have to see that one. I, well, that's kind of it's kind of like this this pile of comic book movies that's just like building up that I have yet to see. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, you know what? I'll put that there. Yep. Uh, and then uh, over the weekend, just yesterday, as we're recording this, yes, uh, the news came out that uh, there's going to be two new Avengers movies. Yes, uh, Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. And returning to the franchise is Robert Downey Jr., but this time he is playing Doctor Doom. And I know a lot of people are very confused, very frustrated I'm confused. with it. I'm not frustrated. I just don't understand the reasoning. Well, there is a I thought about this and actually had a kind of and I don't know how we get to this point in the comics. But there is a thing where Iron Man becomes like a Doctor Doom of some sort. That's a th- that is a thing, like a canonical thing. I have an action figure that is like invincible. It's like it's like a Doctor Doom. But is he in? A, is it a, like a suit? Yeah. Oh, okay. But he's also Doctor Doom. There's a thing. It, it, I don't know exactly how we get there, but but why? But we're getting there, and it was a way to bring Tony back. But not really. But not really. You know, but bring RG Day, but our, our, our DJ back. Because he was like, fuck it, I got my Oscar, now I'm just going to go get money. That's basically like, I think it is. I He's just like, I can just is? do these movies and just make fucking shit tons of money. And I mean, people, I mean, he's fucking over, he's over as fuck. I haven't seen actually anybody on the old internet being excited about this. Everybody kind of thinks it's stupid. It's stupid, but I think, I have a feeling that in practice, it might It actually, might be. You know, it, right now on paper, it's like, uh, but in practice, it's go, probably going to... Uh, it might slap. I don't know. Because RDJ is awesome. The only thing that I do wonder, I mean, outside of uh, when he was an Oppenheimer, is he just going to be the same character? I mean, because I do. Don't, I don't see that. 
I wonder because, I, you know, just like because that's how he is in these things, except unless we're doing like prestige stuff. It's, I think he's trying to I think I think he's got this idea that he's like, well, it's time to class it up. Well, that's why he went and got his Oscar. And then he, he came got back. His Oscar and he's like, hey, guys, I'm ready now. Let's make this, you know, because we've had Dr. Dooms before, you know, live action Dr. Dooms. And yeah, we have yet to get a real good one. Well, here's the thing that I was also curious about, because. Dr. Doom doesn't take off his mask, right? It's like stuck to his face. Isn't yeah, that the got, whole he's idea? Got, he's got, it's all crispy. It's all crispy under there. Yeah. So is it just maybe he's voicing a Dr. Doom and that we have a Dr. Doom? Maybe it's a, like a huge fucking wrestler guy with the Dr. Doom mask oh, on. And it's Drew just. Drew McIntyre is Dr. Doom. Well, no, I'd want him to take his mask off if he's going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he just takes his mask and he's like, fuck CM Punk. Yeah, he's just got a fucking, fucking Scottish accent. He comes out and he just cuts a promo on hey, CM I'm Punk. Dr. Doom. Cuts a promo on CM Punk and disappears. I love Drew McIntyre so much. But yeah, I'm like, so is it just going to be maybe kind of like we had uh, What's His Face voicing Ultron? Oh, James Fader, yeah. Yeah, so is it going to be that kind of thing? I don't know. I know nothing about it. So yeah. who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it'll be fucking forever before we get those movies. So yep. that's fine. See, again, and I was telling you about this, like Comic-Con coverage sometimes is so hard to like- It's hard to follow. Pin down mm-hmm. lately because- it happens and not, not everybody reports on it and just like, here's all this stuff. Da-da-da-da-da. You know, here's all this. Da-da-da. You know, it's always like ongoing, but then like there's different articles and takes. I don't know. It, 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 to me, it's confusing. Yeah. I just want like an explainer. I li- literally need like a bullet points where it's like these things happened on day one. This is I mean, what I'm you sure should probably know. watch like a YouTube video. Or this story. is what happened on day two. This is what you need to know. Uh, and then I can go figure out if I want to know more about that. But when I have to like dig through like. Because even before, I remember it was difficult to do it because it was like you had to like scroll, 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 you know, to try to figure out like what exactly happened when. Kind of a pain in my ass. So, you know, it's not a pain in the ass. The book we're going to read. Yes. Oh, man. I, I'm scaling this wall just as easily as I can walk. My fingers alone are adhering, supporting me. The Amazing Spider-Man, created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, has conquered every medium, from newspaper strips to the silver screen. But he began his life in a pulp periodical destined for cancellation. Let's explore these beginnings together. The Amazing Spider-Man from the very beginning. A brand new podcast on Spotify. There's some sort of danger here, but what? So uh, what are we reading this week? So this week we're picking up on our duology of uh, books for uh, Deadpool and the Secret Defenders, or just Secret Defenders, the Secret Defenders. Uh, Secret Defenders number 17 from July 1994. And uh, this is wrapping up the comic book or the, the Deadpool run on this from this, you know, this uh, book. The Secret Defenders book, which again, it's from the trade Secret Fe- Deadpool and the Secret Defenders, but he's literally only in like three, two issues. False advertising. I mean, it is and it isn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and because if you are again, if you're interested, you know, once you finish this and you want to have the complete package, you can go back and listen uh, to a previous episode we did, where it was uh, Deadpool and the Secret Defenders. Uh, or is this Dead, uh, Secret Defenders, which uh, issue 15, and we just did 16. Today we're doing 17, and then we did 18 at a different time. Mm-hmm. So if you just want to get like the whole thread, although the next thread is something completely different. Yes. But nonetheless, if you need completion. Um, but the cover here is just the cover of the trade, actually. Uh, it's just a different, you know, colors or whatever. And it's. Luke Cage, uh, Deadpool, and Doctor Druid, you know, in an action shot, jumping out at us, and up above it, you got uh, Strange. It's mm-hmm. not Doctor Strange. This isn't Doctor Strange. It's just Strange. This was actually my question about this because I was like, wait. Well, well, we'll explain. Well, you'll have to explain to me. Well, it's okay. So it, the the story itself is called Strange Changes. We're on the covers of Strange Changes, and yeah, so Strange Changes on Bower Time, Bower Barrow Time. Uh, Tom Brevoort and Mike Kantorovic, the writers, and Jerry Decair from, uh, or Decair, the penciler. We pick up from last week where Deadpool 
and the Secret Defenders are fighting uh, Malachi to yes. get the Mobius Stone back from her. And she has finally put it together. She's put it together and she wants to revive her bow. You know, her beautiful, beautiful, uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Corn? Uh, I think it was called um, Quran. Quran. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. But she wants to bring him back. And in the process. And she spent centuries trying to do this, by the way. Yeah. Let's just throw that out there. So she's been doing this for a long time. And now she's got the stone. And now it's wreaking havoc on the space time continuum. Yes. And we pick up where apparently this is only taking place in Seattle and the surrounding areas. I think this is it's like starting here and maybe it's working its way out. Quite possibly. Because we jumped to this uh, dude. This guy's very funny. Oh, this guy with the tattoo that says, I killed my mother for gold teeth. Or yes. For gold teeth. Yes. His yes. tattoo on his arm literally says, I killed my mother for her gold teeth. And it's not even really, it's not even like a stylus tattoo. It's literally it's just It's literally text. words. It's just text. It's like he just went and got like somebody put Arial font on him. Like, yeah. I was just like, <laughs> Yo, what? Can, yeah, can I get that Arial? That, that might be really cheap, actually. It's like, give me the cheapest thing. Ta- Man. I, I, I want to express my disdain for my mother who I killed. Yeah, put it in wingdings. It's like, no, that's going to cost you way too extra. All right, fine. Just put it in. Fine. Arial. Arial. Helvetica. Yeah, like Helvetica, is more, Helvetica makes more sense. Uh, whichever one's cheapest. Uh- <laughs> yeah, don't, don't give me comments. Comic Sans. No God. Yeah, you know, we don't want that. That'd be funny, actually. But as this guy, this guy's driving a truck. He's a truck driver, and we see as he's driving, there's a bunch of vines and stuff shooting up through his truck. Mm-hmm. And then we jump to this kid in the suburbs. Uh, speaking of McIntyre's, Charles McIntyre. I was going to say, is that Drew McIntyre's brother? Yes, <laughs> his, uh, his American brother, Charles. Who was a child, but apparently went to kindergarten and came back uh, 30 years older. He looks like Adam Sandler and Billy Madison. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he, the kid went to school dressed like Adam Sandler and Billy Madison. Yes, Madison. because that's what children dress like. <laughs> well, he wears, he's wearing a backward baseball cap and he's got a, a shirt. A, a, a fucking sweatshirt, probably giant shorts. Well, he's got giant shorts with a number on them. And he came back and the parents, are, you know, and he's like, hey, mobs, I'm back from school. I aged it. Because he would have been like, I'm assuming this kid would have been like 10. Yeah, well, now he's 30. No kindergarten, so he's, he's six. Yeah. But now he's a hard 30. Now he's a hard 36. Well. He's, like, he's, looking, he's looking, looking rough. It happens. Uh, he's shown back up and he's just like, hey. Ma. Hey, Ma, how about those cookies? Yeah, hey, Ma, how about, you got any of, the, you got any of that Miller uh, MGD in the fridge? Exactly. He's going to be like, I can't wait to tell you what Mrs. Uh, what's her name wanted us to do all day. And then he like slams a fucking, you know, Jenny. Cream ale or whatever. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to figure out because did this happen as he was like, was it like a Tom Hanks situation when he's. Oh, like he was, he got big. Well, he got big. All right. But now at the end of the movie, he gets, he makes that wish and he's big and Elizabeth Perkins is sitting there watching him and then he gets small. Unbigged. Yeah. Unbigged. And, and then she's just, like, oh, no, I had sex with a child. Yeah. She's like, oh, my God, I am. A, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I am a felon. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, no. Why was that in this movie? Uh, <laughs> well, also, too, it just it's crazy because it should be more of a thing. Like you don't hear off screen the screams of pain as Tom Hanks is be- his body I is mean, reverting one, back to his 11 year old self. I guess that's why it's a spell. Right. Because I assume you would just hear bones cracking and such as he grows and screaming. And then when he becomes a child again yeah so i wonder if that's the situation here where the parents are watching him walk and they turn their head for a second and he just he just he just hears crack smash Scream. Ah! and then he's like oh hey, no moms. i'm a man i'm a man now i'm a man so and then uh, there's also buildings crackling a crack crack and like down. the tower of babel is taking effect like these people um can't understand each other Really? Yeah, that's what it says in there. Oh, okay. Their language is sped- speeding up or slowing down, and they can't understand each other. Interesting. Okay, so I got that. And then you also got a farmer whose uh, corn he's, is just, He's having a bad day. The corn is farmer. growing and, and dying for him. And, it, it's, and also, I like this. The locals will not know the taste of fresh corn this season, if ever again. If ever again. And, because uh, it's growing and dying so quickly, like the cycle it's going through. Yeah, and then you got in... Uh, the old age homes. Yes. People are getting young and it's crazy. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Oh, no. All sorts of things are happening. So then we go back to the mausoleum where she is like, you know, using the stone or whatever. And Koran. Koran. Yes. And then there's also this thing going on with Cadaver because he's like, 
remembering who he was before he died, but then it's like warring with the avatar yeah. that has taken over his body, which is kind of strange. We get another scene with Cadaver. Yes. Thing with Cadaver, and he's this is where he's warring with it. And he says something because a cage and Deadpool are watching him. They're like, hey, what's wrong with that guy? Uh, everything. I mean, dead, everything. And he's like, I'm Cody Fleischer. She kissed me. St-, you know, and they have like a little note. And then at the bottom, it just says, if you missed the stuff last issue, trust us. It was cool. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Was it? <laughs> was it? I mean, sure. Mystic ladies kissed me and like, turned me into a corpse. Pretty cool. <laughs> Time to hang Ted. You know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, there's a bunch of monsters and everything. And the, the oh, heroes yeah. keep fighting them, but they can't get an edge because- the they keep just Luke basically keeps re- just bringing them back. Yeah, they keep just regenerating. Yeah, I do actually enjoy one of these monsters just axing cadaver in the face and him being like, well, I'm already dead, so I'm going to smash you. Doesn't he say something like you can't kill, which is already dead yeah. or something like that? Yeah, I, can't, I, 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 dig, I dig that. You can't kill me. I'm already dead. Yeah, nice. And then because she needs sustenance, she starts, uh, Malachi starts de-aging Dr. Druid. Yes. But Shadow Woman. Well, no, she's a, she's aging him. She's trying to take his life aging, force. Sorry, aging him. Yeah. And she's taking his life force. And uh, somehow Shadow Woman's kind of like the key in all this. She's like immune to this. Yeah. So she can kind of. Well, she's mostly Shadow. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know? So she can kind of, um, you know, everybody else is getting blown back, but she can like go past it and sort of envelop. Yeah. Uh, Malachi. To give yeah. them a little bit of a, a, give them a, bit, a, bit a of time. reprieve. Well, it gives enough time for uh, Dr. Druid to grow back his George Clooney hair here. Always good. Because he's like, he's like, I'm going to rejuvenate myself and get my, get my sweet, get my, uh, get my cool hair back, hair back, get, make sure that top knot's tight. Oh yeah. I don't know what this is, like some sort of feedback here or is this, oh no, this is uh, her throwing uh, Shadow Woman off. Oh yes. Shadow Woman going off and then there's and this. This is this random scene here where I, I assume that if we were to continue to read the secret defenders, we would find out more about this yeah. because it sounds like whatever shadow woman is, has not been fully explained to her or the audience. Mm-hmm. So that which, cause she should have died doing this, but she didn't. Yeah. And so she's kind of like, yo, Druid, what the fuck? Why didn't you tell me? Um, and that's kind of all we get about this. So I'm assuming in an upcoming issue, we will discover what's going on. And then uh, Luke tries to get, get an edge on her and she, Uses the, the Malachi uses the Mobius Stone to de-age him. Yes. To the point, so he's fought, it goes so far back that he doesn't have his powers. Right. And, and I also like though that she de-ages him and he she gives him back his old clothes. Yeah. <laughs> like it just kind of the fashions just kind of wash over you. It's right. Like, it's like oh man, I really you know I mean, that'd be kind of great though if he could de-age me and just you know get me back to like those sweet shorts I used to have back when I was twelve. You oh, know? I thought you were gonna start talking about the shiny shirts. Oh, the shiny shirts. Yeah, that's right. I need my, I need my old bowling shirts. Yeah. My old, uh, I, the, the period in 2000 when I would wear those. Well, everybody wore those shiny shirts back then. Hell yeah. Also, I want to say here, there's a few, this is within like two pages here where two characters, Dr. Druid and Cadaver, both tell Malachi, you, you're going to incur my wrath. Right. That's bad editing. That's something where it's like, get a thesaurus, you can say something else. Yeah. But alas. So she, I think she uses, does she use cadaver to revive her boyfriend here? Is that what's I going on here? I think that is what is happening. I wasn't exactly sure who this person was. And so she's like, I'm bringing you back. Oh my God, my love, you must be so happy. And as he kind of takes over cadaver's body, he's like, what? No, being dead is awesome. There is so much more. It's just the next step. You don't understand. This. I don't want to be alive. Uh, I need to be dead again, and you need to come with me. He's like, he's like, no, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so over much. Here. I, got, I got a bunch of friends over here, my dead friends. You know, we're having a good time. We're going to have this, a- this is kind of one of those things where it was like when they were younger, they were friends when they were younger, and in college, they decided if neither one of them were married when they were 40, they were going to get married. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, they didn't, one of them just showed up at the other one's door, and they're like, oh, no, I didn't really mean that. I didn't mean that. I mean, I mean that's I'm, what you say when you're drunk in college. Yeah, right. uh, we had a, we had a drunk pact. We had a drunk pact. And we were then, doing uh, TGI Fridays. And we made we had it. We split three mudslides. I mean, that's what happens when you drink those mudslides. <laughs> it's like you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna die. We're gonna, we're gonna we're die gonna, and come back to life. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna get married. If we're not married by this time, and then yeah, and he's like, oh no, I don't want to do that. So you know what? You should also die. 
Yeah. And thankfully, Deadpool is uh, right there to put a sword through her. Yes. And he does. Or no, is it Luke Cage who does it or Deadpool? No, it's, it's Deadpool. Oh, it's Deadpool. Because he did throw... He threw, he threw De- De- Luke Cage a sword, which you don't get to see him using. I know. Which... I kind of want to see Luke That's Cage use the... a sword. Yeah, me too. But, who uh, doesn't? Yeah, because he's like, hey, I don't got no powers, but I'll you know, use the sword. And, uh, but yeah, Deadpool just shows up and ganks her. And yep. she says, my spirit ventures forth to join you on your journey, though it may not, it will not be as I might have hoped as our souls will be at last together. Yeah. So okay. she's, she's got to get used to this, you know, this dead existence, you know, this actual dead existence of being hanging out with her dude and being dead, you know, maybe going to, you know, dead open mics and I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't care when you're dead. Maybe it's like, I don't know. Maybe things don't matter. It probably doesn't. I Cause, mean, you know. well, first of all, you're dead. But if it is the next step, you know, if we all die and then there's some other thing after this, as long as it's not more the- of this, what this no the 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 this the the this yeah. <laughs> yeah no i hope hopefully it's not but it reminds me of in return of the living dead in that movie the zombies you know they're living dead or whatever are attacking everybody and they manage to like apprehend one and it tells them that it hurts to be dead mm. which i do, and i don't i get the impression that eating the brains makes it feels better because these oh. aren't Romero zombies, these are oh, like I the see. other zombies. Okay. So that's why they're always trying to eat brains. I mean, they typically just eat the brains. I don't know if they eat the other parts. Yeah, I thought it was just brains. brains. Mostly, it's mostly just brains. Because um, they're always walking around going, brains, you know. Which I think that's where a lot of that uh, discourse comes about zombies wanting to eat brains. is from that movie. Yeah. But eating the brains makes it hurt less to be dead. Hmm. So... I Hopefully it's not like that because then well, you have to seek I mean, out living brains. You're dead. You can't feel anything. Anymore. I don't know. I'm just saying that's what the afterlife your, is. Your nerds world. are your nerds. Your nerves are dead. Psychic pain. Eh. Soul pain. Soul pain. Fuck that. Soul pain. Fuck it. Druid's like, I'm gonna get me, I'm gonna get this. And then he gets it and he kind of has like a golem moment. Yes. Where he's like, hmm, mm, precious. Maybe I can be doing some uh some wacky stuff with this. Yeah, he's like, oh my precious. You know, he's, as he's contemplating guy. this, we get not Doctor Strange, but just Strange. This is what I was trying to figure out because they call him Strange. And I was like, is it Doctor Strange? Did he have a suit like this at one point? But no. Well, no, he did because, and I don't know exactly how this came to be. I know it happened in the mid 90s where after a certain, at a certain point, something happened with Doctor Strange where he was no longer Stephen Strange, but there was a being known as strange just strange and he wore basically looked like dr strange but like with a muted color palette and he's wearing a mask okay and now he's he's a like a more of a malevolent being yes and which is interesting too a lot of people don't remember this too uh in the very early appearances of dr strange he did wear a mask oh okay like it was but it didn't look anything like this no but he did wear a mask, and I mean, they just thought this was something to fresh up the character, probably. And then I don't think this didn't last very long. It's like one of those things where Shock. Like, we did it, we don't like, we it. tried it, and now Doctor Strange is back. You know, at some yeah. point. So, yeah. um, but he's here, and he's like, I want the stone. He wants all Earthbound magic. That's the thing. So he wants all the magic, 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 magic. You know, he's out there stealing Magic the Gathering cards. You know, he's twiddling his bone flute. Can, can one? suck up magic like that can you acquire i assume like you just work on it and your power grows stronger he's it's just like a vacuum i guess i don't know i mean it's just a way that this this being is op- being operates okay so he gets his he's trying to get the stone and Give me the stone as he's about to get the stone it kind of i think what i'm looking at here is cadaver is slicing dr strange with his sword from like basically it looks like he's going up from his crotch or maybe oh, down yeah. through nice that took me a minute here but i think he's actually just going down i thought he was going up but he's going down here doctor you know or strange i keep wanting to call him dr strange but just strange but strange is like nah this is that, that's bullshit you ain't gonna do that to me and he grabs the sword and he's kind of like yo this is a sweet ass sword but then it kind of goes off in his hands yeah he's like you know man, yo man let me see that sword oh no it hurt me it hurt me i pet this it's like petting a dog and it bites you oh you know so he's out of it Deadpool shows up to say he's missing Letterman. So, yeah, there you go. As you, you typically do. As you do. He comes in and makes a few jokes and uh, he, he, the, the strange does call him an arrogant Harlequin. Mm. So I, uh, I dig that. 
But as that's happening, uh, the stone is by you know is, is separated, you know, from the fracas and uh, Luke Cage holding, still holding the sword, uh-huh. uh, not using the sword, but still holding it. Uh, grabs it, and he slings it over to uh, Doctor Druid. He's like, I don't know, man. You're kind of an asshole. Yeah, but whoever that guy is, there more of an asshole. Yeah, he's more of an asshole. He says he's doctor. We think we're supposed to think he's Doctor Strange. He's but not. it ain't Doctor Strange. No. So you're more sane in this moment that I trust you. Yeah. Although if Doctor Strange were here, like actual Doctor Strange were here, I'd give it to him. Yes. But he's not. But he's not. This is while like Doctor Strange or Strange is getting pummeled by uh, Cadaver and. Druid uses the stone to, I guess he says, uh, the stone, I think, I think he kind of does a thing at the end of Wishmaster where he, they wish it to be like back before it existed or something. Wait, back before the stone existed? Yeah. It's like it, it reverts the stone. Like the energies go in towards itself. Okay. Past the day of the sources of the of the stone's, stone's creation. creation. Okay. So, and that reverts everything back to to normal. So. Yes. So that kid gets to be young again. Yeah. So Drew he's McIntyre's young. brother is now young. Corn's okay, and old people are old again, and uh, the buildings are fine. The murderous truck driver is just like, okay, back to my route. Yep. <laughs> so. Too bad I killed my own mother. Anyway. Anyway, I'm a you know I have a mission of uh, murder on my uh, my arm here, but anyway. Very fucking random. Strange is just like, I wanted that stone and now it's not here. So I am, uh, I'm going to go leave. Fuck I'm going to yeah. fuck off. Luke Cage gets his powers back. Thankfully, yep. he actually has a part, part of the stone relic that he can return back to Chicago. Uh, although he's like, because uh, uh, Shadow Woman's like, hey, so like, you know, this is all done. But, you know, because Dr. Drew is just not, doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, uh, thanks. Shadow Woman's like, oh, just take it back to Chicago or whatever. And he's like, well, you know, next time call Spider Man. I, I like when they, right. I, like, I like when something like this goes and they're like, you know yeah. what? Call Spider Man. You know what? Fuck this. Call Spider Man. And I, I, and at the very end here, Druid's like, hey, if you see Doctor Strange, tell that motherfucker that I am tired of doing his shit. I'm right. tired of doing this Secret Defender shit. You better get his ass over here. You better get his ass over here. We've only got. Five, ten more, less than ten issues left here. Uh, let's get this over. Yeah, Whatever. let's like, get where, this where, shit where, done. What's he up to? And, and then we just cut the Doctor Strange somewhere. I guess the actual Doctor Strange. Looking. Yeah, he's standing like look, by real, a f- look real buff too. Like he's, he's oh got, like, yeah, no, he is. He has so much neck here. He, there's so much neck. He also has the Clooney haircut, uh, and he's standing like by a fountain. Actually, he's kind of got like Clooney slash Polly Walnuts. Polly Walnuts slash uh, Harry Osborn. He's got like these, uh, yeah, he's got yeah, some wavy going in here. It's yeah. Uh, He's looking, he's looking, uh, it, it's a very different doctor. He doesn't also have like any, he's just got like stubble. Yeah. It's weird. And he's just like, you know what? Deal with it. Yeah. And then, uh, that wraps that up. But then we get a last coda here. So to take us into the next issue where, uh, apparently there have been court bodies or corpses that have been showing up in, uh, somewhere in Texas mm-hmm. that, uh, are filled with bugs Ew. in their lungs and, you know, the, whoever this, uh, you know, this, whatever this police guy is, is just like, you know what? Time to call Dr. Druid. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's where we end. Well, that's where we end in the next issue. A tiny little war. <laughs> Itty bitty small war. Tiny war. Oh, the tiny war. Oh man, Avengers tiny wars. Is that like playing, uh, what is it with those, those, Warhammer figures, those little that guys. Is, that, is, that's, that is exactly that it. is a tiny war because you paint all those guys and then they fight each other. It is, the, yeah. Paint your guys, have a tiny war. That they they tried that. It didn't sound great. It wasn't like Tiny War Three Thousand. You kind of had a, you know, they had to call it kind of fun if it was uh, Tiny War Three Thousand. I mean, we had Tiny War. We had uh, Warhammer sto- stores, stores in the, the Gallery of Mall. Back oh yeah, day. I think they still exist. They, they do. People still go to them. I think there was actually one over uh, here. It was close to us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I believe it. It's. I just remember the one time going there and just I didn't know anything about it, and I was I went in and there's some guy 
maybe it was my brother was there. It was with my Brian with Brian or whatever, and he was like showing us, and he's like, yeah, and then you do this, and you line it up here, and he's like, boom, devastating, and he kept on saying devastating. Nice, I just, it, but it, but it wasn't devastating. It was just a bunch of tiny tiny wars. Oh, small wars. <laughs> small wars. Itty bitty wars. <laughs> So yeah, that that that's gonna do it for uh, our Deadpool the uh, excursion here. Uh, issue number uh, Secret Defenders issue number sixteen from what I say July or seven sorry six, 17, 16 was last week. July's uh, Secret War Secret Defenders number seventeen from July nineteen ninety four. I guess next week we will pick up on something new. Find us on the uh, social medias. Hopefully by the time I've did this recording, I've inserted the. The thing, the thing the that, thing we that I recorded as a separate bit so it has our socials and stuff like yes. that. So, but anyway, but if you do, you know, just as a reminder, worst collection over gmail.com, find us on Instagram, Twitter, and, and then go on YouTube, find us there, Angry Hill 79, and this show is uh, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yes. So, rate and review us there. We would really appreciate it. So, once again, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again next time. Bye. Bye.